right, hello everyone. My name's Matt Race and I'm from Race Dental. Welcome to the Race Academy Live webinar series, episode five, shade matching for optimum aesthetic results. As usual, as we wait for the last of our people to jump on board, we've seen we've got big numbers today. I'd like to welcome everyone. We have people, dentists, others, technicians all from Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Malaysia, the United States and Singapore. So welcome everyone and we appreciate you taking time out of your day to come along and see what us technicians need to give our patients optimum results. Again, if anyone has any questions as we go, please make note of those. We have people vetting those and we can jump on those at the end of the webinar. So again, thank you very much. And uh, let's get started with Ray Stendhal's webinar series, Shade Matching for Optimum Results. Today I am coming home, uh, before I do start, I'm coming live from home today, playing our role in the COVID-19, staying safe to keep our staff, our clients, and most importantly, our customers and, and patients safe. So uh, here you'll see a beautiful representation of a smart work from home. So I hope you enjoy that while we go through shape, taking optimum results. So here you can see a pretty tough case. We're missing a 1-1 one, one, and we have some difficult shade pieces down in the incisal of edges, some translucency, some mammalons, some internal characteristics and effects. And how do we get a good result with uh, restorative manufacture in these difficult circumstances? How do we manage to get results like these? And a lot of our clinicians uh, like to send the patients down, but it's just unnecessary. You can see another difficult case here, lots of translucency, lots of internal characteristics, mammalons, halos, etc. So we're going to learn today what we need uh, as technicians to ensure we get these shade matches correct and hopefully correct first time. Time is money. Getting it right in one go is paramount to the success and longevity of a successful business and clinic. So today we're going to see how we do that and what, us, what we need as technicians to, to get these sorts of results. Um, so moving along now, we can see there's a plethora of different shade taking technologies that have come out over the years. Some have been beneficial, some have been not so useful. Uh, up in the right hand side, we can see Vita's uh, shade taking system that just registers what the shade is. Uh, some other ones across here. Down the bottom left hand corner was the shade vision system from x -Rite. It was the first system on the market which enabled us technicians to do virtual try-ins. That was quite powerful, but uh, about 15 or 16 years ago, we were using that technology and it was great whilst we were still learning. Shade polars on the right-hand side came out, uh, made it a little bit easier to read shades. And on the top left here, the elaborate prime system. Again, it's a, a newer version of uh, doing virtual try-ins and it gives um, inexperienced technicians uh, a good starting point uh, but there's nothing better uh, than digital photography. The TRIOS system is probably one of the best scanners on the market. It, it is capable of taking shades. Uh, if it does say that the tooth, and you can see it's registering the cervical third of the two, two here as an A1, it does register that and it does do a good job of recognising the shade. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us internal characteristics or um, mammalons or halos or or any of the further details that a digital photograph can give us. So yes, the TRIOS takes a good shade, but it doesn't give us enough information for those anterior cases. <clears throat> As you can see here, it's quite comprehensive in its capability, but a little bit shy, it does, it's just an artist's impersonation of what that incisal translucency and characteristics looks like. So I've got some questions coming through there. I'll ask the girls to, to um, uh, and our support team to look after those and we'll, we'll address those at the end. So the first thing you need for digital photography uh, is a camera. And which camera, and I get asked a lot of the time, which camera uh, should they buy or should our clinicians buy? Uh, this is an SLR and a lot of people use SLRs. It's probably unnecessary, but this is the one that I use. Uh, it's a Nikon D7000. I'd also put it on board with a uh, a macro lens and flash system and I really like these flash point brackets which enable the flash to be hit the tooth at a 45 degree angle. 
that is beneficial and you can get some pretty good close-up or macro shots like this that clearly demonstrate the translucency, the halo, all these characteristic mammalon effects, any cracks or little bits of pericomata at the top, and I think you can get to the drop. Unfortunately, with the DSLRs, it really takes a long learning curve to be able to use them. So this is the same tooth taken three times, same photo taken of the same tooth three times, and you can clearly see how different each of those can look if you don't know how to use the DSLR properly, if you don't understand the settings. So if you don't know your settings, contact us and we can start helping you. But I've put this together as a starting point for most DSLR users. An ISO for a full face shot, if you want to start around 400, I think that's a good starting point. An ISO for an intraoral shot, around 200. The F-stop around 13 works for a full face for, for the Nikon. I, I believe the Canon is a little bit different. And around 22 for an intraoral photo. The focus, I like to use full face, I think, auto, but internally I like to run a manual setup. The flash one to one, speed 125, flash control manual, and the image quality JPEG. And this is really important. Please set your cameras to JPEG so when you send the photo, we can read it straight away. A lot of the cameras are set to RAW. When you send those photos, we need to export and import them into some other software to be able to read those. So please, please uh, set your cameras to JPEG uh, outside of a RAW and do us all a favor. It will make your life and our life a lot easier in not having to post process your photos. The second choice, which most people use, is the simple smartphone. I have a iPhone 8 and I think it does as good a job as some of these bigger cameras these days. It's all autonomous. You don't need to understand settings and, and how, to, how to run your DSLR. So a smartphone is good. You may wish to couple that with something along the lines of a smile light. And I really like this smile light system. It gives us a really nice result. This is a simple system where you can strap your phone on the back and it has two 45 degree light, uh, uh, lights and also one in the middle. It does come with some diffusers, which makes the photography look a little bit nicer and set you don't get the light reflection off the two uh, that some of those direct wind light flashes can give. And also down here you'll see it comes with a little diffuser or a polarised piece as well. We'll talk about what that can do a little later. Pretty simple to use. You snap this on the back of, uh, uh, you snap any smartphone on the back here uh, and, and it becomes a, a, an excellent lighting source for any smartphone. And these are the sorts of photographs that you can take with a smartphone with a nice smile, with a nice smile light or, or a light system that straps on. And you can see it's a pretty uh, user-friendly photograph. Uh, we've got all the information we need from translucency and halo, characteristics, labial characterization, internal effects. And I think it suffice uh, for most uh, clinicians in their communication with us technicians to get a nicer result. These are all smartphone photos taken with that smile light. If anyone's interested in that smile light, please make contact with our customer support team who will direct you uh, in the best way to, to take on one of these smile lights. So not only anterior aesthetics, you can get some nice posterior photos. You can see all of these taken with a simple smartphone. When I first bought the smile light, I put my iPhone 8 on it and I took this photograph. Day one, you can see the incisal edge of the shade guide up against the natural tooth. <coughs> and I can really see everything I need to know to be able to manufacture that restoration in the hope of getting it right the first time. Some more questions coming through there. I ask those to, uh, to please wait till the end and we'll get to those uh, at the end of this presentation. So it does have a polarised filter and a lot of technicians believe that polarised filters or lenses can help. Personally, I don't use them, but you can see what this photo looks like in a polarised state. It, uh, it, does, it does, I guess, highlight the calcification and some of those internal characteristics and some of those internal cracks. I don't use them, but a lot of people think that helps, but um, you, might, you may want to consider a polarised filter should you wish to <coughs> uh, try and help in communicating. There are lots of different filters we can use, and this is a reverse one that just highlights to me the value of our ingot selection. And I can clearly see this needs to be a high translucent ingot. You see the high translucent shade tab here up against the restoration when I'm finished, just to see how true it is. <coughs> so I like this filter when I'm 
choosing uh, which uh, when I'm making my index selection for uh, predominant Emacs and Emacs CAD restorations. Here's another filter, uh, which is a simple contrast setting. I can this really highlights the labial characterization, these cracks here, internal characteristics, the halos, and the translucency. It really dominates uh, the, the information uh, needed for incisal build-up, so our technicians really like that. Alternatively, we can run to black and white, which helps with the value. And this also gives us a lot of information. It's unnecessary for you to take a black and white photo. Uh, our, our, the technicians in the lab will turn it to black and white just to try and highlight those characteristics predominantly around the mammalons in the incised ledge. Here's another photograph courtesy of Dr. Malcolm Cook. And he takes these photos uh, and he eliminates the, the gingiva like this. And it just enables us to focus more predominantly on the shade of the teeth and the shade of the teeth only. So you'll see in approximately, in the, in the, if I just go back here, this cervical third of the 1-3, you can see it does, it's more saturated in chroma. But when we highlight the tooth by graying out the gingiva, it does tell us a little bit more information about how much chroma or how much saturation in that cervical third. So it's another powerful tool, the one you may have to look about, uh, a look at. And it's another useful way of seeing what we need to do in restorative manufacture. Another technique is what they call a the grayscale, and this is how it all started with the eLab Prime. A really good tool, and I think it's quite useful for, for the, um, the budding ceramists who are uh, still learning um, how to build uh, successfully. It does give us a lot more information, I guess. Uh, I think a good digital photograph in the hands of a premium ceramics is, is good enough. I think these systems are probably unnecessary, but I thought I'd show you that if you've got a ceramist who is still learning, um, maybe graying out the scale or, or finding an ELAB prime might, might help. So then I get asked by a lot of clinicians which shade guide they should be using. And here's a number of shade guides that are on the market. Um, and it's kind of difficult to know which one to use or when to use what. Um, this is a shade. This one here is a, a stump shade photograph, uh, a photograph in stump shade. I think it's fine just to use a normal shade guide. 3D Masters, pretty popular. Uh, and this is the one that most people use. And I'm going to tell you my opinion on which shade guide to use. And my opinion on which shade guide to use is to ask your dental laboratory what materials they use to manufacture crowns. And most world-leading manufacturers like these all use the Vita Classic Shade Guide, A1 to D4 Shade Guide, because the materials they use to manufacture, their restorations come in these shades. So I think the best shade guide to use is the one that your dental laboratory has the, the right tools or the materials to make. Most world manufacturers are using the Vita Classic Shade Guide, and therefore I recommend utilising the Vita Classic Shade Guide. So if we take a look at that, here's the A1 to D4 Vita Classical Shade Guide, which I recommend. But what I like to do is consider changing from A1 in the order uh, arrangement that it comes in, into rearranging the tabs into a value base. So you can see here the value, the brightest value down to the darkest value. And this order here is going to help you focus on the value as opposed to the shade or the, the, the hue or the chroma. It's a similar sort of concept that the Vita Master Shade Guide took on, but I think the Vita Classical Shade Guide, rearranged in this order, will help most clinicians focus on the value, which is most important, and then deliver the correct shade choice for the restorative manufacturer. Conventionally structured on hue and chroma, restructured on value. I've, said, I've just reproduced that in black and white here so you can actually see how the chroma, or sorry, see how the value changes from bright the dark and I think it's a real powerful way of turning the Vita Classical Shade Guide into a more useful tool for communication. So here's a case that came in, restorations required on the 1-1 one, one and the 2-1. Some beautiful photography there and I'd just like to use this case as an example of how to take a correct shade guide photograph. You select the shade tab that looks most similar to the restoration that you're matching and in this case it's the 1-2. And then you, took, you put the incisal edge of the shade guide 
up against the incisal edge of the natural tooth that we're trying to match. Remembering if you're making a one through, then you need to take your photographs up against the two through. You can see this, the D2 shade guide is an excellent shade match for the incisal edge here. Then the D3 shade guide is an excellent shade match for the cervical of the one two. The AT has a little bit of the A2 bottom, the bottom left photograph here is, is a nice underlying shade. And the D2 on is an excellent match in size with the two two. These photographs are perfect in giving the dental technicians what we need to get premium results. So please ensure you put the shade guide and size edge up against the size edge of the natural tooth that we're trying to match. Ensure that they're both perpendicular to the camera, not on an angle like this, like this, or especially not cervical to size edge. A nice incisal edge to size edge get a good photograph. Grab another shade that you think could be close as well and take another photograph. And you give us these photographs and the chances of that restoration looking good first time is, uh, is going to be improved. Some other photographs here that show a similar um, the technique where we've got incisal edge against the incisal edge. Here's a different shade tab. And down the bottom for our lower anterior cases, you want to take it inverted so the incisal edge is against the lower side. So you can see the importance of putting a shade tab in there for reference. Here's the same shade tab in the same mouth with two different camera settings. On the left, if you hadn't put the shade tab in there, we probably would have made an A2. On the right hand side, without a shade tab, we probably would have made a C2 or a C3. So it's important to create that reference point with you, with you, by using the shade tab itself. We can then utilise the the shade tab is as, as simply as a, rest, uh, as a reference point, so it's paramount to put the shade tab in. Again, another example from we're made, making a one one. Some great photos here uh, that we needed to. One moment. We've got, uh, okay. Yes, yeah, some excellent photographs here with different value settings, and you can see the different settings of the camera giving different results. Uh, here's some photos from Angela Lazarus who. Um, She's a great photographer and we really appreciate the, uh, the detail in this photograph uh, to give us some nice results and improve the chances of getting that restoration right first time. If you're using metal free ceramics, it's also important to communicate the colour of the underlying dentine. I don't think you need to purchase a specific dentine shape tab. I think the traditional Vita Classic shape guide, like you can see here, and the importance of the photo is not as important as you can see here. We're going to need to mask out the discoloration more aggressively on the 1-1 one -one than the 2-1, but it's really important to provide these shade tab photos, the underlying shade, so we can mask where necessary. Or we can grab the underlying colour with the translucent ingot and help bring those warmth through in the restoration. So super important to get those results. Another example, it's not super important to get perfect photos, but for shade tabs, uh, this is good. We can see I, I need to mask this out in the one one region with the low translucent ingot, but I'm happy to use a high translucent ingot in different areas here, and it just gives us more room to play, and our ingot selection becomes easier. Please ensure that you take all of your shade photos before you do anything. A lot of people spend time prepping the teeth, and then they take the shade photos, and unfortunately, when cineresis takes place, a lot of shades, a lot of teeth can lighten by one, two, or even three shades, and inhibition can take up to three, four hours. So you can see how much lighter the one, two is here after the teeth have been prepped in comparison to beforehand. So please take all your shade photos before you even get into surgery or train one of your, your team to, to do that for you uh, and get all the photos before you do anything. It's important that you get photo hours before the teeth change shape or lose that water. Here's a good example. It's an old chromoscope shade that came in. We're making a 1 1. Stump shade's taken here, so I know I don't need to do a lot of discoloration marking or marking out, and the restoration's finished. This is straight away at time of cementation. So soft tissue healing hasn't taken place. But you can see here the light reflection up to 1 1, matching the light reflection to 2 1. The, the first light reflection up to the, on, the, on, the, on the central low matches central road reflection on the 2 one. So these sorts of photographs give us great ways to get these results right the first time. Same with implant cases. Another example here, if I zoom in, you can see the cervical warmth of the 1-2 the 
matching the cervical warmth of the 1-3, even 1-1. One, one. The internal characteristics, this bluey, mauvey colour matches these colours nicely. The halos and the white flecking can match nicely and the interproximal colours are nearly a perfect match. All from good photographs. So please take good photographs. The better the photographs, the better results. This patient came in, had two veneers done elsewhere, and I think um, the only issue with these two veneers was ingot selection. Again, didn't have enough information. Shows a low translucent ingot. We just simply replace them with a high translucent ingot and get a beautiful result. So good photographs give us the right information to make ingot selection and color choice. For posterior work, this is a simple photograph I need. We're replacing some posterior restorations. I just ask the patient to bite down and you can use a mirror or if you can retract the cheek sufficiently enough, you should get a good result. Uh, and I think, again, some posterior photos like this from an excellent dentist, Dr. Yuli Ong, and I thank her for her photography. It gives us some beautiful ways to get nice results. This patient needs two inlays. A simple photograph like this from Dr. Ong and the lab can perform in giving a nice high translucent inlay in those restorations. And I think you can see these finishes and these solutions all come from good photography. Thank you, Yuli. For large upper cases, um, you might wish to consider taking a photograph of the lower anteriors. And this gives us a lot of information on how much work or color or effort we need to put into the incisal edge of the uppers. So we can push the boundaries of how light we can make those upper teeth. But then with more character in incisal edge, we can help them blend in with the lower so there's not uh, a lot of differentiation in color between the uppers and lowers. So for big upper anterior cases, please provide a photo like this so we can put more work into the incisal edge to help clean that. And you won't get that stark differentiation. It's a real powerful way of getting those big cases blending nicely and pushing the boundary on how much we for single tooth or anterior work, uh, the labial characterization, again, nothing works better than a, than a, um, than a, a digital photograph. You can see on the left hand side the nice high shine finish here, as opposed to this patient on the right hand side who has a satin finish. Um, so, yeah, these photographs give us everything we need to, to ensure we finish that restoration, to, to do everything we can to get a look uh, in the mouth as we can. That labial characterization, another fine example of all this detail here. And this detail is highlighted by taking photographs with those two 45 degree lights. The direct ring flash would flash back at the camera and give a result that's not so uh, useful. So 45 degree angles will highlight all that labial characterization. So that smile light will give us give you everything you need to get that result. And if you've got a lot of detail and in labial characterization, like severe pericomato or some real chronic characterization, then Again, consider good photography and hope that we can finish those restorations and make them look the same. If you have some gingival matching, here's a two unit case um, courtesy of Brett Taylor, another awesome dentist. Uh, so we, we finished the restoration, and on the right hand side, we just used our gingival masking to try and get a nice gingival result here. It looks much nicer here, and uh, Brett takes some lovely photographs, which makes my job a lot easier. So thank you, but consider using a shade tab. I uh, like the gingival shade match, so put this up and take a photo and give us the information we need and hopefully we can get that ginger to blend in perfectly. And patients with high lip lines um, will be the ones that benefit the most. So if you were to use a, a tricky anterior case, uh, please consider using the elite team at race. Uh, the elite team are the technicians that pour them up and extra effort into getting each of those labial characterizations and internal characteristics and that single central work right and you can aim and you can get these sorts of results by utilizing the, uh, the elite team and giving us good photographs again we looked at this at the start but uh, using these shade matching techniques and with digital photographs we can hope to deliver those sorts of restorations here's a case for dr luke cronin we came in it's a monolithic zirconia bridge from the one three to the one four and you can see all the characteristics. Luke's photography is off. It's fantastic. So you can see the mammalon effects here. It's calcification and the fluorosis. The, um, the cervical warmth and the translucency matches perfectly. And that's all from good photography. So you get it right, and the lab will get it right with you. That's it for our shade taking. But before I go, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jeff Hall, 
Dr. Jeff Hall is a orthodontist in Melbourne, and he is a great guy, a good mate, and he has kindly decided to help us with our webinar series. And episode five will be Jeff talking about early orthodontic treatment, uh, the essential knowledge for a general dentist. So if you've got, well, Jeff says that approximately one in four children aged between seven and 11 who present in the dental office have an orthodontic problem that would benefit with early orthodontic treatment and prevention. So his webinar will discuss the three most common early orthodontic problems that present to a general dentist, and we'll discuss how to identify those conditions and how best manage them. So tune in on the 18th of August at 12.30 to hear Dr. Jeff Hall in one or even, I believe, in the first of three um, orthodontic webinars. So it's fantastic to have Jeff come on board or Dr. Hall come on board. We are very appreciative of his skill and his offer to help our clinicians and our general dentists in acknowledging our occlusion and our best amount. So thank you, Jeff. So again, I'm Matt Race from Race Dental. I appreciate you taking the time today. And I'm going to throw it over to our girls. Um, Karen, is there any questions? Thank you, Matt. So a lot of our questions were around the smile light. <clears throat> so what we'll actually be doing is um, we'll be doing a fan putting together a fantastic promotion for our smile lights. Um, and we'll be emailing out um, all of that information to all of our webinar uh, participants in the next coming days. And so they'll get that and they'll be able to take advantage of a really great special that we'll be able to offer them. Oh, that's great. Look, there's no doubt it's a very powerful tool. I don't leave home without one. So that's great, Karen. And do we have any other questions or oh, that was it? That was all. A lot of them were about the smile light, which is which is fantastic. Okay, thanks Karen and Karen's from Customer Support. If you have any information or you need any information, contact customer support at racedental.com.au or again contact me, Matt, at racedental.com.au. Thank you for your time tuning out. We appreciate you all taking your time. Thank you very much.